Welcome to the Floor Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hadeen, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in the brutally hot Phoenix, Arizona. I want to help you build an asset. Man, it's hard running a business, and you may not know how. I know I didn't know how, and that's where this show came from. So I want to help you go from owning a job and making a little bit of money to running a business, having some systems and processes in place. And finally, we're going to, I want, I, I have this dream. I hope you want this dream. I want to be able to walk away, and it still goes. And there's employees and management, and they just, they do it and you can check in, you know, monthly, quarterly, you, you figure it out, you know, you, you build it for what works for you. But I want to make that dream happen. What we're going to talk about this week is multi-generational teams. You probably, if you're running a larger company, you definitely don't have all Gen Z guys or millennials or, um, gee, I can't even think, Gen X or, or boomers working for you. Oh my goodness, those boomers, jeez. Ah, oh, my parents' generation, what are we gonna do about them, right? But there's there's gonna be a, a multiple generations working and, and how do you do that? Because these, these, look, we don't always get along, we don't always see eye to eye, it leads to problems, you're not hip, you're not cool, so, I've got Rachel Berlin. She's returning. Thank you for coming, Rachel. I appreciate it. I want you go ahead, introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, what you do, and then let's jump into this. Let's jump into your conundrum. Yeah. Um, thanks, Kyle. I appreciate the opportunity to be back on the show. I did look back. It was quite some time ago. I think it was 2019 that I was on last. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thanks for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Rachel Berlin. I am sales manager of a um, flooring retailer in Plymouth, Wisconsin, and um, we did just open our second location. So I've, be, I've been the sales manager now for just over three years, um, but I've been in the flooring industry for over 15 years, uh, which is crazy to think about. But um, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot, and having mm -hmm. that multi-generational team has has its challenges. I think it, I can say that it has its perks as well. Um, but we we range all the way from 19 years old um, up to I'm going to just say in their 60s. Okay. Well, you're not so, supposed to ask. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Don't ask a lady her age. And so it's apparently right. it's not a man. So that's why you're not telling us. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no. Well, so let's start. Right. So you've been doing this 15 years, and you've been mm -hmm. at Precision floor and decor floors and decor floor and decor no precision floors, floors and, decor. and decor yes i yeah. see the chain came it. in and ruined it all <laughs> <laughs> precision <laughs> floors and decor but okay yeah. so you've been there six years but you've been doing this 15 and yes. you and i are around the same age so Correct. i hate to say it i really do but we're, we're getting to that middle-aged thing so we're no longer the spring chickens. And so not e even you, like you came in and you were like the young, hot kid on, on the block, right? You were going to come in. You're going to yeah. change everything. We're going to, oh, look at this. It's so trendy and stylish. And, and so yeah. even for you, you've seen a lot of evolution. What has totally. that been like for you to try and stay current and up to date? And, and say like, oh, like, I can't push that anymore. It's not cool, even though you're like, but that's the thing. <laughs> um, it's, it's really funny that you say that because I came from a, a company that um, had been around for over 50 years. So their, their whole thing was really like, we've been around forever. You know, we, we have this, you know, root in the community and this and that. And when I started at Precision, I realized that there were a lot of things that were missing. And one of the things, mm -hmm. and I know you are big on this as well, Kyle, is technology, mm -hmm. um, where the flooring industry is, <laughs> you know, like behind already as it is. Um, but I realized that we needed to really kind of ramp up some technology. So when I started, I was one of the youngest ones on the team. And I was able to kind of like, you know, do some research here and there and figure out, you know, what, what might be some good tools that we can use um, not only for the current team, which was a little bit, um, the average age was a little bit older. Mm -hmm. um, and then me coming in, 
to kind of, you know, hey, we should check this out. Hey, we should try this new um, this new platform and just kind of introduce some new things. And I think since that's happened, you know, we really we gravitate towards, you know, getting those Google reviews and like that became more of a focus and the mm-hmm. communication and what what different ways there are to communicate was a really huge part of it. So, you know, I think I was probably annoying a lot of my coworkers at that time when I was like, what if we do this? What if we mm-hmm. do that? And now I have those, those um, members on my team. Who, they have a book that's their idea book okay. that I give everyone. And it's for those things where you're like, Hey, we should, I think we should try this or we could do this. And I'm like, okay. put in your idea book and we'll get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, I mean, you're at least giving them the chance to, express it there's just you know right like let's have a system and process in place and make sure it's at the meeting when it's time to do that it's not always the time uh so even with 15 years i gotta think like google reviews weren't as big obviously 15 years ago neither was facebook i want to say you know i still see that older generation like are you on the bbb and and so yeah. I, I got to think 15 years ago, that's what you would have been pushing, correct? I think that was something that we were proud of at that time. It was like, yep, we're on the Better Business. I bet if I said that to one of my younger employees right now, like one of my team, they would be like, what is that? <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, it's interesting how things evolve and just mm-hmm. where that um, where that weight gets put on, you know, the reviews now in comparison to what the BBB was at that time, Mm -hmm. you know, that was a big deal. And now we just have so much more opportunity for those reviews to go. Um, I think it's positive and negative. I mean, if you get a negative review, you're going to know it pretty quickly. And I think you have a little bit more of a chance to um, hopefully rectify it. I mean, I don't know if you've ever gotten a bad review, Kyle, but, um, if we ever did get one and if we, I mean, we have gotten like a, a one or a two star review, like we're on that so fast to try to figure out why and to just, you know, usually it's my owner that gets on the phone and he mm-hmm. does what he needs to do to, you know, to make it right. And I think that's kind of the speed of technology that's been, um, it's always the good and the bad. Technology is great when it works, but it also can spread like wildfire if you have a bad review. So yes. you got to be on top of it. Well, and so let's let's get into that a little bit, right? So over 15 years, it's it's evolved. It's morphed. You obviously, you've stayed on top of it a little bit. You came into, into Precision and you were like, hey, let's try this or that. And you kind of got them updated with technology. So mm-hmm. how has that been for the team as of like, recent right like tiktok is huge and so you have a 19 year old on your staff and so he's mm-hmm. he or she is probably running around on tiktok like look look, <laughs> look at this dance look at this trend look at this thing look at these videos right and then you have this the 60 year old who is probably like what is this nonsense get this out of here like it, I, I don't even want anything to do with it so how are you keeping the team up to speed and what's the feedback from the team about where this is going, right? Social media is, right. it's, honestly, it's kind of absurd. <laughs> I'm not gonna it lie. is. Yeah. Um, so it's, I find it kind of interesting because I do, some of my, my younger team members are, they're, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say like old souls, but like they really do have like, they have a lot of great information and they're really like intuitive um, more than what I ever expected. <clears throat> so with, with the technology, I think starting them out with the, these are your tools, you know, these are the things that you're going to be using. They've embraced it. Um, and I actually, you know, with my, we've been saying more mature, so we're going to say that more mature staff, Mm -hmm. you know, I've realized that they, they do a really great job of just like staying on top of that and, and also kind of embracing it, but realizing that it's helping them. So like I say all the time, there's no way I would remember, you know, these 60 files that are on my desk or more at one point in time. So we have a technology, um, a software that we use that I call it my brain. Like I can't, I would never remember all this stuff. And they, they agree with me. They're like, yep, I would never remember mm-hmm, it either. Mm-hmm. So it just, it gives you that little edge. Um, I think on your competition to just like 
you're going to follow up regardless, but this just like puts you ahead of it. So I think they've embraced it, but also we lean on the younger members of our team. Um, when something doesn't work the way it should, it's like, Hey, come over here. I need you to fix this. This thing isn't working or something's happening on my computer. So um, I think we've, we've realized that some of us have um, strengths in certain ways that we can kind of embrace and hopefully that helps, you know, the team members bridge that gap in between the age. Okay. And how is the like fluidity of the team? It, you know, look, if I was working with grandma, like I would, if I had to work with my grandma at 19, I would lose my mind, man. My look, she was the sweetest lady. I love her to death. But if I had to work with my grandma, I'd have done lost my mind. Either of my grandmas, I'd have done lost my mind. So like, what does that look like? And how do you kind of keep this cohesive team going? I'm going to use one word and it goes both ways. Patience. <laughs> Patience is key. Um, we've definitely had to embrace some, some changes um, where things not everybody takes things like to the completion of I'm going to really take this and run with it. Um, so I think the younger members of the team, they know they have a lot to learn mm -hmm. from the more seasoned designers who have been in the industry for 20, 30 years, maybe, uh, or more. Mm -hmm. So it really is a give and take where those younger members are, they're kind of, I, in the training that we do um, at Precision, we have our, our newest members actually observe or shadow all of our designers that are more seasoned and have been around for a little while. So they get to see kind of the bits and pieces of each one of our technique of when we're with a client and it really just kind of allows them to pick and choose. They can kind of, you know, build their own way of doing things. So okay. I would call it more education than anything. Um, I don't see that there's like a big clash in personalities. Now, I don't think most of them are going to go and hang out after work and like, you know, do things together. I mean, some of them might, but generally speaking, they all, you know, we get along as a team, but we're not like the young ones and the, the more mature ones aren't like besties, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you're not finding that bestie situation, mm -hmm. but you know, we respect one another. So that's, I think that's the part that really we have to realize is that we have to respect and, you know, just value their, their experience. Mm -hmm. So what, what caught my attention was you're having the newer, newer team members have to come in and train with, multiple people you yes. don't have like a set like you as the sales manager is not the trainer and you're like okay look here's the book here's how we do it you have them go and see multiple different people multiple different styles which i, I like yes. because you're not yeah. one way isn't the right way it's it, everyone can kind of use a combination you want to do what's comfortable with you so i really like that mm -hmm. if a more if since we're using this word now this is this is the thing right if a more mature person was hired than you and you'd had somebody like if this 19 year old let's say it's three years down the road right mm -hmm. they've got three years sales and design experience are you going to send this more mature person out for a week or whatever it is with this 22 year old and say you need to train under this person i would definitely give them the opportunity to shadow when there's when there's store traffic and if that you know if that veteran of three years is coming in and she's been doing this and the new person comes in and they have zero flooring experience. Absolutely. I'm going to have them observe and, um, and just kind of shadow and watch what's going on because mm -hmm. you never know what you're going to learn. And I don't think even, I mean, we did a whole, we did shadowing and, um, actually some like role playing on, on Friday. So we were a little bit quieter right before the holiday. It was like, we didn't have a ton of star traffic and that was probably some of the best training. It's it's good for me to to hear them, but it's also great to kind of talk it, talk it through with multiple people. And like you said, I mean, the experience of the years is one thing, but just mm -hmm. how you speak to another person or a client, and just kind of those discovery moments of like, okay, how am I how am I learning about what they need and what they want. Um, and how to ask those questions properly. It's a skill in itself. And I kind of think like you have it or you don't, but 
we've been really lucky to have great, um, great team members that really embrace that, you know, being curious is a big part of what we do. Mm -hmm. Well, I like that. So you not you were slower and you were like, hey, come let's I was it you that brought everybody in and like, hey, we're slow. Like, we're all just kind of sitting around. Let's start doing this exercise. Yeah, I, Good. <laughs> I thought That's of it awesome. like a, a week in advance. Like I was like, I want to do this. Um, we use a particular flooring software. And I was like, I've always said we need to do a scavenger hunt. And it's just basically me asking questions like, how would you find this out? Mm -hmm. How would you get to this answer? And there's usually multiple ways, but it's just kind of like they picked a, a, a slip out of a hat and they read it and then they tried to figure it out. And if they didn't get it, then we helped them through it and we showed them the way to do it. And it was just it was really kind of fun. And then they got to pick um, another slip out of a different hat. And that was a display, like a display in our showroom. And then um, one of my estimators didn't have, he didn't have measures in the afternoon. So he played the customer okay. and then they got to ask all the questions and they, he, he tried to stump them and he tried to ask goofy questions that they maybe wouldn't know. And I mean, they've just gone through all their product knowledge trainings. So they, they should be pretty, pretty good at it, but he threw some curveballs at him. And I think that's what we all need. And who better to practice on than your own teammates? So Cor yeah, you're a good. little more comfortable with them, but you're at least exactly. getting the, the hard questions and push to your limits. So yeah, you don't want to screw up in front of a customer or have a like practicing on a customer. So yeah, these are some yes. good opportunities to really, you know, see, see where they were at, you know, mm -hmm. as far as their level of knowledge mm -hmm. and just how they would explain things. But I, you're you're incorporating it in, right? Like you knew that there's probably a time coming up. Like, hey, I want to do this, and oh, look, it's a good time. So, hey, everybody, come over here. Yes. So I, I like that. Is there a is there a way that the team is is handling it differently? Like, obviously, you know, is the 19 year old going at a totally different approach, trying to sell and move something as opposed to your your more mature sales members? <laughs> I think what I noticed, and I've ha I had the same problem when I started out, and I've I've felt like I've tried to, you know, point this out, but not in a not in a real negative way. Um, but I've always had that whole mentality, like don't put your wallet or don't put your wallet in their pocket is the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, just because you can't afford these things doesn't mean that they can't. And don't you know try not to like portray that you know this is way more expensive than the other thing. Like if that's the right product for them and you can make sure that it's the solution that they're looking for, they're going to buy it because mm -hmm. they're buying you, they're buying the solution um, and hopefully the beautiful floor that you're designing for them. So um, that's one thing I do notice a lot with, with the younger uh, team members. And that's why I tend to ask them to start off with a little bit higher end product because you can always go down, you can't always go up. <laughs> That's always the hardest part in sales yeah. is that, you know, if you can start out with something and you can really make them fall in love with it or like really, you know, sell it to them, um, not in a salesy, you know, gross way, just to make sure that they, they really, mm -hmm. you know, they're embracing this solution. Um, generally speaking, it's not a hard way to, you know, they're going to love it and they're going to take it home and they're going to, they're going to spend a little bit more on it. No, I, I, I like it. So it's, you make a great point because there was a time when I remember like I couldn't afford my own installs. I was selling <laughs> stuff I couldn't even afford and I would exactly. negotiate on price and I would come down and be like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. too expensive. Like, let me adjust this even before I send the bid out because I'm looking at it. I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of money. Like, mm. and, and so and then they like, don't bat an eye and you're like, like oh, exactly. <laughs> and so the one it was a really big realization that the day I realized like I had the bank account and the income to afford it, my own install, I was like, oh man, I'm like, okay, like I'm doing yep. pretty good now. So it's a good feeling to like see yourself get there. And I think that's what you need to get through to people is like, like you said, right? Don't let your life situation affect what you're selling. If somebody comes in and they want $80 a square foot, like custom herringbone sand and finish work sell it to them that's what they ask for don't say oh no you don't want the here here's this two dollars square foot lvp like no man sell the 80 get that commission so yeah don't and generally speaking i mean we in my showroom like 
if my owner could only sell hardwood, he would. Like, I mean, we know LVP is great, but mm-hmm. there are some homes that you are not going to put LVP in. Like, you should not put LVP in. It's a it's a hardwood, you know, you, you know those houses Correct. that you, you go in and they're yes. like, but I want LVP. And you're just like, this house needs hardwood. So we, we try to, you know, kind of put that we try to differentiate ourselves on how we do hardwood so that when the customer comes in and they're looking for luxury vinyl and we can put maybe another alternative of hardwood mm-hmm. next mm-hmm. to it, that's, you know, it, it's hard to say no to that. It's, it's a beautiful floor unless they really can't, you know, can't do hardwood for some reason. Usually it's going to be easier to sell it when, when they see it and they know that that's the best solution for their home. Correct. Has there is there a difference in the approach of of selling between the generations? Like, are you seeing like a a harder push or a different? Uh, there's got to be a different approach between someone someone that's kind of younger and and more you know quote unquote hip as opposed to someone that's been doing it forever and maybe not up to date with current words. Right? Like, let's say it's just your your average right your your average consumer is probably going to be mid to late thirties to Mm -hmm. mid fifties. And so it's your, the, the maybe more mature people are, are relatable on the high end and maybe just like outside of it. And then on the Mm -hmm. lower end, the, the young people are like, they're not even in touch because that's not their generation. Right. It's like once one removed. Right. So are you seeing them approach it a little bit differently and how they handle those like ideal clients that are kind of right in the middle of them? Yeah. I think, um, what I see a little different is, um, some of the more seasoned are, they're going to take maybe a little bit more time, um, to maybe sit down, like sit down at our design table, talk about, you know, what they have going on in the home, what, what's the project all entailing, you know, maybe they're doing other things besides just the flooring okay. and just really try to understand them, maybe like not rushing through it. Um, whereas some of the younger ones, if the customer comes in and they're what they're like, I want luxury vinyl floor, or I want waterproof floor. They go straight to the display. They don't ask any questions. They might just like, okay, do you like this? Or do you like this? Or do you like this? Like that to me is like, it's really painful sometimes to see (laughs) when you're not really creating a solution. You're really just saying, you know, you're asking them what they like, which half, I mean, more than half the time, most clients do not know what they want. They can tell you what they don't want or they don't like, Yes. but I think that rushing straight to the display, um, when somebody says, I want this, or I'm in, I came in for this, um, you know, we need to do a little bit more digging. And I think that's maybe where those uh, more experienced and more mature designers have a little more experience and they're a little more patient to kind of connect with the client and, and figure out, you know, is that really what you want or is that really what you need? And then creating a solution um, and maybe even just like saying, let me grab a couple samples. Here's what I'm like understanding that you're saying. And I can come up with a couple samples mm-hmm. and just, you know, Versus having them page through a display one by one, that's a waste of time <laughs> to me anyways. So I don't want to waste their time and I mm-hmm. don't think that they want to waste my time either. So um, asking those questions really kind of like narrows the funnel down of what they're what they're really looking to to do. Well, besides like that, you know, I, th- that sounds more like a sales experience thing. <clears throat> is there a, a lingo approach? Is there an attitude approach that you're seeing like differently between them and maybe one works better than the other? Um, I think, you know, I would say that most of our team is really, is, is really good. They're not, there's not a lot of ego that's driving things, um, which I like. I, I think that, um, it might be a little bit more designer focused. So, you know, I have two designers that are pretty much fresh out of school from the last, they have their interior design degree Mm -hmm. um, and, and one has an interior architecture degree and they kind of approach things, you know, really from the color and the aesthetic standpoint. um, Whereas sometimes the performance might outweigh that in, in those beginning phases. So I don't know if it's like an attitude part, but 
I do, I guess I would say outside of the sales side of things, you know, I, I feel like in the last few years, and maybe this is COVID too, it's just, there's a lot more emotions <laughs> involved okay. in just like trying to, trying to navigate a team and, um, you know, just making sure people are, are okay. And, you know, just kind of paying a little bit more attention to like the day to day, um, maybe feelings because it's going to change from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. So okay. just kind of well, navigating okay. so that. Let, let's dig in there, right? Okay, so there's obviously a difference in how these different generations are going to handle, one, not only what happened through COVID, but mm-hmm. I, I think in general, like society is going to tell you that these younger kids are cry babies and they need safety cry corners and like they're just more emotional and and for better or worse like it's probably not a bad thing to be in touch with your emotions Mm -hmm. so that that's definitely good it's now can we deal with them appropriately i that's that's the question so how you can't let that carry like your entire day (laughs) but so how is that affecting the team though of of how are you navigating where a, a younger person on the team may want to be one way and an older person on the team is like, look, I don't get what's going on with Timmy, but but Timmy needs to like stop right now. Like suck it up, buttercup, and, and move on. Because right. Right? that's definitely that older generation's mentality. Like, yeah, like dude, you're yeah. at work. Shut up. Let's go. Get it done. Right. I mean, I do have to say that like even myself, it's like, you know, if you're having a bad day or a bad morning, like that shouldn't really come in the door. We should leave that outside of these doors. Mm -hmm. Um, if you need to have that moment, you know, I'm a big proponent of getting outside. Like if something happened that really like emotionally affects you and you're having a hard time letting it go, or you're having a hard time working through it at work, like take a moment, go outside. I don't care if it's 10 minutes. I don't care if it's a half an hour, but like, I need you to like figure that out and then come back when you're better. And if you're not better, then I really kind of need you to maybe not be in the showroom. Like, Mm -hmm. cause it's going to affect other people. You know, that like when, when one person has that, that moment, it's like, everybody's kind of like, okay, that, that was weird. I don't know what happened. And you know, it's very contagious and, and the opposite is true as well. So I, I really encourage, and I encourage this with everybody. I mean, we're in Wisconsin, Kyle, you've had really nice weather probably since January, but <laughs> we haven't. And yes. it's like that lack of sunlight and that lack of like That's brutal. vitamin D, it affects people and it's darker and drearier here than it is other places. So it's yes. like when it's nice out, you need to get outside. You need to go for a walk. You need to go leave the building on your lunch break. I don't care what you do, but like, you need to go outside and just like get some fresh air. I don't care what you do. Just leave these walls for a little while because sometimes it just gets really, you know, you get too much in your own stuff. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But I mean, are you seeing conflict between the team over how it's handled and and portrayed and their thoughts on it? Or is everyone kind of like, like there, the world is very polarized. Okay, like let's not kid ourselves, right? Like we keep mm-hmm. getting pushed more and more to these extremes, and there's less people that want to like hang out in the middle, right? And, and the workplace is definitely a place where like we kind of need to hang out in the middle. So mm-hmm. it, is the team is your team having issues because of stuff like that? Where they they're like, will it build like conflict, or have they learned to okay? that's how that works and so i'm gonna let it be and then they're the, mm-hmm. you know the younger people may be able to say like okay that's how jan and bob are and like we're just gonna like we're gonna let that be and we're gonna walk away and we call yeah. it a day i guess i would say that you know the way that i handle it maybe isn't the way that everybody would handle um a particular conflict or whatever it might be but <sighs> I, I think most 
most of my team will come and sit in my office and they'll like talk to me about what's going on. And then like they can close the door and just like have a moment. And I tend to ask them, I'm like, are you just venting? Are you, do you want some advice or are you going to change something? Like I kind of need to know where they're at on those type of things. Um, Generally speaking, I do not have those moments with my more mature (laughs) Um, team members, they, they tend to figure it out on their own and they don't come sit in my office. They, if they have something they, they want to talk about, we'll figure it out. You know, maybe we'll go to lunch or we'll go to, you know, get coffee or something, or they'll pull me aside at a different time, Mm -hmm. but, um, kind of dealing with that. It's more, I feel like the younger ones need to like talk it through and then, and the older ones just, they figure it out and they just kind of work. They're like more self-sufficient in that way. And I don't know if that's, that's definitely a generational thing from, from my point of view um, and good, bad, or otherwise, I think that what they need to know is that I try to have the best interest of the mm-hmm. company and of our team at heart. So even if they don't agree with the way that I handle it necessarily, um, that at the end of the day, that's that's where my heart is, is that I'm really Mm -hmm. trying to do the best thing for them, for the company and just like safety and everything else is the most important part. So I don't know if I answered your question. Uh, Well, I mean, you know, you did because they're, they're dealing with things in different ways, but it may not even be that this older generation is, man, I keep hitting my mic. I'm sorry. Uh, it, It may not even be that that's the way they do it. Right. That they, they don't need to come and see you and walk through it in the office. Like, Look, they've got more life experience. They've dealt with more mm-hmm. stuff. They've seen more situations. They're a little bit more wise. Mm-hmm. So they can sit there and kind of process it and just be like, mm, uh, okay, I'm going to go about Is it this it worth way. Is like, it to freak where, out? No. <laughs> whereas, once again, like, look, at 19, 20, 21 years old, 22, right? We're just finishing college. Like, you're dumb as rock still. I'm sorry. Like I look, I know Ooh. there's some younger people that listen to this. I, no offense. You're still dumb as rocks. You don't know everything. I still don't know everything. All right. Like we're constantly learning. And so go get that advice. Have a sounding board. Like I think they're doing the right thing, right? They're going to the boss. They're the, the manager, whoever's in charge. Mm-hmm. They're saying, look, I'm struggling. Like I need education. So I think that's you have a great team because at least they're coming and looking for that input as opposed to okay. I'm just going to do whatever I want. Cause I know I was the, this, this is why I run my own company. I was the guy that was like, I don't care what you say. Like I'm doing what I want to do and look where that got me. <laughs> and I'm sure that happens too. I mean, there's going to be a lot of that, but you kind of live and learn. And I mean, there's certainly things that have happened over the last couple of years where I'm like, I just want to go back and be like, if you knew then what you know now, how would you have handled that differently? You know, it's just some mm-hmm. some really quick reactions to things. Um, I follow a guy on, well, YouTube and he's on Twitter and everything else. But um, Tim Kite is his name and he has E plus R equals O. And it stands for ev- event plus uh, response equals outcome. And the one thing that you have control of is the response mm-hmm. and it's not react it's response reaction is a totally different thing when you react you're just like quick it's less thought you're not pausing but that response is what really we need to think about so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think that's a great lesson for everyone when i think about it myself it's like okay if i take five more seconds 10 more seconds 20 more seconds to think about this and then i respond i'm probably going to be a little bit more calm if it was a not so great experience or a not so great situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And I'm probably not going to regret what I say or do. And, you know, if it's an email, don't send the email, (laughs) all that great stuff. But, you know, it's, it's a lesson that I, I have found you can't, you can't re you can't unring a bell, you know, you can't unsay something once you've said it. So that's, that's one of those lessons that I think some of the younger ones and I probably needed that when I was younger too like don't just pop off the handle and do the thing I mean you you didn't when you were younger I still need it (laughs) yeah I mean me too but I like (laughs) no I still I I, I still need it I need it right now right now (laughs) oh no that's beautiful advice right there take just take a moment before you respond that's Mm -hmm. that's huge okay 
what's how's the setup when when somebody comes in the showroom okay so obviously if somebody comes in and they're like hey look i need jan or bob or, or little timmy or whatever like you're going to get that person as long as they're in or you have an appointment scheduled with them but when when somebody just walks in mm-hmm. is it there's like a a unknown like a, a known list that's not written down like okay it's going to be bob's turn and then it's jan's turn or is it first come first serve like whoever can get there fast enough what's that setup kind of look like um, so we have a front desk area that's real close to our front door. Um, and we do have a sales and design um, assistant. So she is, I guess what you would call more of a receptionist slash assistant. Mm-hmm. And she'll greet the customer when they walk in the door. And she knows who is there for the day. And she kind of keeps an eye on like who might be with a client or who might be in an appointment or who might be out for lunch or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so we kind of use what they would call an up system where if it's a new client walking in from the, for the first time, she'll find out, you know, have you been in the store before? The answer is no. Um, You know, she'll connect them with one of our designers and there isn't really a way of necessarily like picking who gets who Um, it does kind of just go in order. So if, if somebody had a client just, you know, a half an hour ago that came in just for them, Mm -hmm. you know, it'll go to the next person. Um, And certainly, you know, we try to be as fair as possible. But, you know, if there is a, if there is a client that if it's an online lead, that's another thing I try to pair up, pair them up with the the best fit as far as, as a designer goes. So um, it's a little harder to do that in the showroom because you really don't know. (laughs) So So when, when these people are coming in, they get stopped at the front desk before they can even get in. Right. Like you're not, the salespeople aren't wandering the floor and finding them there. It happens. I know, but you, you have a system (laughs) in place that's supposed to work, right? They come in, they get greeted. Hey, let me grab somebody for you. And then they can Mm -hmm. go and and do what they're supposed to do. That's what I'm trying to figure out because I wanted to, what I want to know is when somebody comes in, right. This, that, so I'm going to gravitate to somebody like me, whether I'm 20 or whether I'm 60, like I'm going to just gravitate towards somebody like me. And I'm wondering if the clients coming in the door that don't have a relationship with anybody, are they trying to gravitate to towards somebody and get away from a designer that they may have, have gotten because that's who was like up on the list, right? Like here you get Jan and she's more mature. And then they're like, Mm -hmm. like, Is that, have you gotten that from any clients where like they request to work with somebody else or has it come down to it being a, you know, just not a good fit. And then the designer's like, look, I don't, I can't do that. I'm sure it goes both ways, but what's, Mm -hmm. how's that play out? Um, yeah, that has been definitely a challenge because everybody has their own style. First of all, um, not everybody is going to work best with everybody. That's just impossible. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, if we have had, you know, maybe a client came in for the first time they worked with so-and-so, um, they came in another time and that person wasn't in the showroom at that, on that day. So they worked with somebody else and they just clicked with that person. Um, if that happens, you know, we have to be mature adults. And if that client does request to work with a different designer, First of all, lucky for us, she found somebody, you know, she still wants to work with us, even though maybe designer A didn't didn't work out for her. Mm. Um, so now we have a second chance and she really likes designer B. So, you know, the two of them, they kind of they should be able to collaborate notes um, and, you know, just get to the get to the basis of what what the client's looking for and what they're working on and how far you've gotten with them. Um, but we have to learn not to like allow our feelings to get hurt. It's not personal. It's not something that we need to be like, oh, she hates me. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like it just happens. And I mean, it's happened to all of us. I've had it happen to myself. I've had it happen where like my boss just connected way better with these people. And I'm like, I'm just not that technical person that knows like every spec on everything. Like I won't be that person, but I can help put colors together. So we ended up collaborating on the project mm-hmm. instead of like one or the other. And, you know, we just have to, we have to understand at the end of the day, your team is very important, but like, if the client decides that they want to work with somebody else, like we got to let that happen. And we have to just work together 
um, and not be, not take it personally. But I think they're, I think deep down, most people will get a little bit hurt over it. It's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, it's hard not to, right? Like it, you take it mm-hmm. personal, you're trying to do your, your job and you want to do it well. And then they're like, oh no, I don't want you. Like I, I want this person. Uh, yeah. I want to I want to dig into that a little bit more, kind of how you handle it. Maybe, you know, does the entire commission get handed off Do they, if they're collaborating? Does it get split? But let me let me interrupt us for one second here <clears throat> and then we will uh, we'll continue on with some stuff. The International Surface Event, the annual flooring, stone and tile sourcing experience in Las Vegas has a unique experience for the industry. Introducing the Surfaces Show Home, Cali Boo Vineyard by Jennifer Farrell. Surfaces is working with celebrity design and TV host Jennifer Farrell to develop a 7,300 square foot show home in California. The home is under construction, but due to technology from Visualizer Plus, the industry can experience virtual room reveals each month. Then plan to view Cali Boo Vineyard in person or virtually summer 2022 during the home tours. Visit www.caliboovineyard.com now to sign up and join the journey. Man, 7,300 square. What do you even do with 7,300 square feet? That is so much much space, especially for a designer. Like, wouldn't you love that? That is so much space to play with. Like what a, what a playground. That's amazing. (laughs) John's Manville manufactures a range of innovative building materials, including products for the flooring industry from go board to Eva John's Manville products are not often visible, but they provide technical, environmental, and economic advantages to the essential items you are installing every day. GoBoard is an ultra lightweight and waterproof tile backer board, and Evolith products are fiberglass or polyester non-woven components used in making carpet tiles, LVT, and resilient flooring. John's Manville surrounds you, and you don't even know it. All right. What do we... How are we handling these situations, right, Rachel? What what are we doing? Where do we go? How do we make right? We all got to play nice in the sandbox, and that's yeah. not always easy. And so now, Bob's come in, and he didn't like working with Jan, but he really likes Timmy. How, does, does does Bob just lose? Or he doesn't like Jan. Sorry, I can't even keep all my names. <laughs> Does Jan lose all her commission? Does she still get something because she did the initial work and lead up and like maybe went and measured, but then they came back and they can't decide on colors and how do, how do we start figuring this, this all out and making it happen? Or is it case by case and whatever, like the, your, your team decides, right? Like the, they just sit down and talk about it. Um, so first of all, I'll start out that I definitely was really bad at this to start with. And I was like, Oh my gosh, why can't this work? Like I've never run into this before. Um, or if I have run into it, it was so like easy. I was like, oh yeah, whatever, you know, go ahead, take the, take the client. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first time that this came about, I would say I probably went about it way wrong. I, as a new manager, okay. I didn't have manager school. I didn't have leadership classes. I didn't, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh oh. Doing. <clears throat> so after my boss and just kind of f- figuring it out, I was like, like I can't get in the middle of this. First of all, I mean, they can come to me and they can talk to me about it, but as soon as I say, she said that her client said that she doesn't want to work with you anymore. Now I'm in the middle of it, and why should they believe me? I didn't actually hear the client say it. Mm-hmm. I just know that that's what she said that she said. So it's a very, it's a touchy like subject. But what Mm -hmm. I've learned is that I have, like you said, we all have to play nice in the sandbox. I have said to designer that the client wants to work with, you need to go over and talk to other designer and let them know that this is what happened. Now at that point, the other designer can be like, I don't believe you. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, who's really losing at that point? It's, you know, you're not, you're not gaining anything by being like stubborn about it. So the way our system works is that you can split designers. So we can, we have a designer one and Mm -hmm. designer two. Um, The 
main designer because they're going to be the one that if anybody has questions on this job from here on out, they're going to go to that person. So that should be the one that they're currently working with. That's designer one. And then designer two gets um, to be on there as well because they started the project and they should get something for their efforts, at least for, Mm -hmm. you know, unless they didn't really do anything. If they, if all they did was like take a phone call, then that's not, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So Mm -hmm. that's what I've learned to do. I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but that's, I just got to get out of the middle of it because it doesn't do me any good. And I end up hurting somebody's feelings. And ugh, Well, and I don't think that's your place to be, right? Like, I think that's the best, what your approach is, the best approach. Hey, go, go talk to them. Like you got to figure this out. If the you client, need to practice you know, talking to your coworkers, even if it's uncomfortable, because let's just be honest, conflict is uncomfortable. Regardless mm-hmm. of what you're saying, if you're being truthful and honest and you're doing it in a respectful way and you're doing it with kindness and you're not just going like, they don't like you. <laughs> like, you're not going to do that. Like, that's just not the right way to go about it. You wouldn't want that done to you. So, you know, just approach it in a nice, calm, respectful way. And generally speaking, it's going to go way better than what you're imagining in your head. And it'll be just fine. You'll get the next one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm with you. Uh, what's the What's the biggest struggle you've had with, with having a multi-generational team so far? What's been like the most frustrating part about it? I think just the different methods of communication that everybody chooses to use. Um, okay. Like you're probably like me, Kyle. I think I, I think I know this about you. You're a texter. It, it's yes. It's it's quick and easy <laughs> and and eff- effective, right? Like it's just there. And you don't actually have to talk to somebody on the phone, right? No, but I prefer it. I do prefer to talk like I'd rather okay. have a phone conversation, but I will text you to like get the points across. Right. Yeah. If it doesn't if it doesn't really if it's a yes or no or like a one word answer, a text, I think, is is great. Um, <clears throat> there has been some challenges just, you know, the more mature generation wants to jump on the phone at almost every opportunity. Mm-hmm. And our guys that are installing in the field don't necessarily want those phone calls Mm -hmm. because they're in the middle of installing. So if you have something that you need to talk to them about, my recommendation is send them a text, say, Hey, when you have a free moment, would you mind giving me a call? I need to talk to you about whatever, whatever, but the phone call and then the voicemail. And then like, it kind of just, it ends up getting a little too lost at that point where, you know, the installers would prefer a text message. Um, and I don't know if that's like the worst it's, it's just learning each individual, um, way of communicating. And I would say too, it is harder for me. And this is my, my, probably my own personal is it's harder for me to, um, to manage those that are a little bit older than me. I just, it's hard because I, I do respect them and I, I know that they are different than me, Mm -hmm. but I have a harder time like leveling and just like finding that common ground because we do have different life experiences, but I've, I've made it my mission to really try to connect with them, whether it's going out to lunch. Um, that's one thing I do on a regular basis. Usually like once a month, I'll take one team member out to lunch just because it allows me to get outside the store with them and just connect on a little bit more personal level and I can learn about them a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's been a challenge for me, but I don't know. It's, (laughs) it's always something. (laughs) Well, and I think maybe that's, that's going to be a problem for the whole team. Like I said earlier, right? Like the younger generation is like, man, I don't want like that man. That's grandma over there. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Like, I don't want to, man, they're so old and annoying. (laughs) (laughs) different yeah uh, correct and like i like and look you're not old you're you're mature and wise and i get that now that i'm middle-aged okay like mm-hmm. i've grown up and i've matured too okay i yeah. get it but you're young you're young and s- just not wise yet i won't call you dumb you're not stupid you're not wise yet okay you need yeah, more life you don't experience. know you don't know <laughs> There's a lot of things I'd take back if I could. I can't. I own them. I'm proud of them. Uh, maybe not proud, but like I own them. Okay. I've made yeah. mistakes. Uh, so uh, that's a great point about 
the like getting somebody to embrace newer technology and being willing to communicate do you struggle mm-hmm. with it staying one form i actually just saw our, our mutual friend ken ballen posting about um oh no it, he responded to somebody else's comment about like hey how do you get clients to like not use multiple forms like they were emailing me and then they sent me a text message saying hey i just emailed you is like i'm finishing up the reply but even i like once again with our mutual friend katie marcotte we were talking one day and we were texting back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and then i switched because i had to get her information somewhere else and so then we were going back and forth through messenger for a minute and then we switched back to texting and she was like i didn't even notice i just kept hitting like the thing that popped up the notification right (laughs) but the conversation went between two things and so there's actually Mm -hmm. a chunk that's missing in the middle so does your team have problems with that like are, are the younger ones like they're over here and then they're communicating to you over here you know it's funny because Like we use email a lot, okay. but I would say that I, if I'm going to send out informational things and I do a lot, like I'm like, read this article, this is awesome. Or like, I really want you to like, think about this thing. Here's something that, you know, to look at. And this is going on to our whole team. I generally speaking, the younger ones do not reply at all. And the ones that are more mature, I usually get a response from them. And I don't know if like, that's just... Maybe that's a generational thing, but I also think it's kind of, to me, I have to actually teach the younger ones, hey, if I send you something and I'm sending it, even if I'm just sending it to you, even if you just say like, got it, or like a thumbs up or like an emoji, I'd rather get that than nothing because I think you're kind of ignoring me. Like, I'm like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sending this out for nothing. But if I ask a question, then I really do, I am asking for a response. So the... The generational part of it, I have had to ask, um, like, hey, if I'm going to send you something, would you just mind, you know, replying with something just so I know you got it and just so I know that, like, you're either you're going to look at it later or whatever it might be. Um, So communication, I mean, we have I try not to text the team very often. I just I feel like that's their own personal way of communicating and. They don't need to hear from me unless it's me saying like, hey, the meeting got canceled. Hey, we're Mm -hmm. snowed in (laughs) or you're not you don't have to come in if it's if your roads are too bad or whatever. I know you don't have to deal with that, Kyle, but um, things things like that. I try to not text them unless it's, you know, something that's Mm -hmm. important. But yeah, it's and, and, and to me just on top of that, and this would go for clients as well as my team is like, how do you want me to communicate with you? You know, like Mm -hmm. text message, email, phone. I mean, if they can tell me if they're like, all of them are fine. Okay, great. I'm probably not going to call them unless I have an emergency, but Mm -hmm. you know, text message and email, at least I have their okay. I think that's, you shouldn't, you should probably should not assume anything. That's probably a good rule of thumb as yes, well <laughs> yes yes Do, is that on your is that on your like client intake form or your initial like estimate yes. form like what's your preferred look at you go look at that yeah we started that a while because we have um i'm not sure if i can like say names of companies that I, we're using. I, you look I, I i know you're using rlm over there and, and now they're you know and you probably are using the other associated software that goes with broadloom so we'll, we'll throw it out there but that's about all it's gonna get <laughs> this is a text messaging pr- platform. Oh, you, oh, yeah. You use um, uh, you got Podium. Podium. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And maybe they can be your sponsor too. But anyways. Yeah. Um, hey, Podium, <laughs> call me up, man. I look. We'll talk. I promise. I'll link to this video and I'll get I'll get you a sponsorship. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Podium is great. But that's our store text messaging platform. Okay. So we're using that for you know communication with our installers. Um, we're using that for clients who want, want to send us pictures. We're using that for um, reviews, all those things. And, you know, that's that's a great way for us to communicate, like, a message to a lot of people. Um, but, I again, like, for client usage, it's perfect. But some people don't want to be text messaged. They're like, I'll get them, but I won't respond. So I'm like, great, you know, 
email or phone it is. Mm-hmm. Has it was it obviously the the younger generation is is adapting to the technology quickly, right? You give them the iPad or the the tablet, mm-hmm. whatever it is, and and you say, here's this stuff. And go to town, and five minutes later, they're they're doing things you didn't even know you could do with it because that's just how it works. I can give, I can give my kids something, and they just I I can't even figure it out anymore. I hate it. I hate Pretty it. Pretty awesome. I, I hate yeah. seeing it in my life. Um, but with with your the older people that you're working with, like, was it a struggle to get them on board and to understand, like, hey, here's this thing, and you can tap here, and you can do this, and like. It went from, right, like it used to just mm-hmm. like, let's carry around a notepad and have sticky notes everywhere. <laughs> and then it- I still it, love it, sticky notes, don't get me wrong. I got one I got one right here on the corner of my monitor. It asked me if I'm recording and I, I botched <laughs> that up for a minute. So, uh, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But it's, uh, you know, I, the technology is great, right? It helps keep us more organized. Everything can mm-hmm. kind of be in one place. We can access it virtually from anywhere. But it, is it- was it hard to get them on board? Is it hard to keep them on board? I think because we started it while they were still um, being onboarded and like when it was, when they were first starting, we Mm -hmm. already had it in play. Um, So I think if I introduced something new now, it would be more challenging. Um, I try to, not do too much at once. You know, it's like RLM is one thing. Podium is another thing. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the uh, our other software is another thing, but they all do work together in a sense. And I think if I can, if I can change the language so that they understand how it's helping them potentially either make more money, make more sales, be more successful with their own clients, like then they can get behind it. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to kind of, I guess massage it a little bit in a way that like one of one of the ladies is she's great with RLM. Like she is so good with it. I'm like, hey, would you mind showing some of my some of the new members like what you do day in and day out and just let her teach it? Because I mean she probably uses it better than anybody. And I'm like, why not let her teach Mm -hmm. her way and then we'll have kind of a standard way of doing things and they don't know any different when they're starting. So it's like, well, if that's the way we do it, then that's the way we do it. And there you go. It works out well. I don't have to show it and yeah, mm-hmm. all good. No, I think that's, that's great. Have there been, have there been issues with clients? Well, maybe not clients. Have there been issues with designers not understanding what clients want? Because like, Man, look, I I grew up and, and grandma change. had well, correct. Like, look, man, my once again, love my grandma to, to death. She's been gone a long time, but there was plastic on the sofa, right? Like you just go and sit, and like it crinkles under you, and like that. But that was a thing. It was yeah. a thing, and it was so I get it. But is any of the team stuck in in a way and a in a style, and they're trying to push something, and you're and it's just not going to happen. Is, is that an issue that you're dealing with? And how are you dealing with that? I mean, I think we all have to realize that with anything that we're doing, right? Like education, any kind of information that you did, like when I went to school, it was a long time ago too. Like when I went to interior design school. So like a lot has changed mm-hmm. and I, I have to like embrace that, but I also have to know that, I'm in charge of my own destiny. So if I don't keep myself up to date on the latest trends and what's going on in the industry, um, if I don't speak to people that know what's going on and just kind of keep my ear to the ground on, on, you know, the, the newest and greatest and latest, it's like, if I'm not doing that for myself, I'm not helping my clients either. They may not always ask for like, what's the trendy thing. Mm -hmm. But I need to be prepared when they do ask those things, like, what is this called? Or like, you know, if they refer to something and they know it and you don't, that's kind of an embarrassing moment Mm -hmm. that you're like, oh, let me go Google that really quick. Like, I don't want to be stuck in that position. So um, I have run into it where, you know, maybe maybe the designer isn't quite up to speed on like all the latest and greatest like trends necessarily. But we try to really 
be on top of it. Just, you know, we get all the magazines, we, you know, pass out all the, the articles and, you know, I think all of us have access to just about every single article there might be about flooring. So, you know, if you, if you really truly don't look and do anything beyond your nine to five day to day activity, and you don't educate yourself on things that are important in your industry, like you can't expect to excel. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to go. It's, it's not going to put you in the right trajectory to, to really do better, mm -hmm. but maybe at a certain point, you're not really interested in doing any better. And you're just kind of like, I've done all I can do and I'm just good with it. And just, you know, clock in, clock out, which that's not a fun position either for well, me. Well, no, it, it's not. But is is that it sounds like you, you don't want to address this directly. So I'm going to try and uh, <laughs> come on. Let's let's talk, Rachel. Come on, open up a little bit. What's going on? I, I want to like, I really want to know, like, how is this struggle? Like, is this a real thing? And, and how did you deal with it? Right? Like that this is we had this conversation. I know. Come on. That's why we're doing well, this. You know, like what, what, what's it like? What's that struggle? How do you like, how did you address it? How do you get this person to realize like, look, I either got to get with it or maybe this isn't the, the project for me. And like, right. this isn't the career for me anymore because I'm trying to give people things that are maybe 20 years outdated and that's mm -hmm. not what's going to sell. That's not what they're coming in for. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's something where we have to like acknowledge it, but at the same time, um, I think utilizing people in their strengths is another way to go about it. So mm -hmm. it, I think the hard part is that when you know someone is closer to the end of their career than the beginning of their career, it and you kind of have that feeling like it's, you know, retirement is around the bend the, they're, know, phone, like, they're phoning it in at the do? end yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean is there a way to right if somebody's I, like like we talked right i mean is there a way that somebody could get they only get pushed clients that maybe fit their style better or they oh. they get put out onto projects that would appreciate that style right like maybe there's yes. a commercial building going up that's going to be a retirement center and this should be designed around the people that are going to live in it so are these ways that we can deal with this or is it a matter of like hey look if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do the work then there may not be a place on on the team for you mm -hmm. i mean i definitely think that that's that's got a lot of validation to it and um, strangely enough, or whatever you might say, that is like commercial churches, like those kind of projects are actually, you know, kind of in the wheelhouse of where that, that particular person wants to be. And I'm like, I mean, we definitely need that position and we definitely need a go-to for mm -hmm. those types of jobs. Um, the hard thing is, you know, those aren't always the ones that maybe make that much money on the end of it, but it, it really, it can, it can help to kind of like bridge that gap or fill that role, fill that space. Um, but it, you know, I can't have a one trick pony either. I need to have somebody that's really like able to do all the things mm -hmm. and be able to be, you know, a designer. So it really, it comes down to, you know, what, where our company is going and where your company is going, if you're in the same position. Um, and, you know, it's, at some point, you just got to have that open, honest conversation, right? Correct. And, and so is there a way of, have you found a way to take this person and team them up with maybe uh, uh, someone younger on the team and, and say, hey, look, kind of, you know, here's here's what protege? they're, well, <laughs> I mean, here, correct. Like, not only can you like show them what you're doing, but can you kind of look at what they're doing and showing so that you can better accommodate the other folks coming in or is it a matter of um can you guys can you can you work together to like make these things happen i i, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a if it's a combo effort or if it's a yeah. like kind of i hate so to like say it but like take, team it together. Correct, double team it or mm -hmm. like it, it's i think it's got to be that way or it's got to be like hey take a hint and I don't know that that's the best approach. Like, like management is not my ideal thing here. So, <laughs> the take a hint approach I don't know is probably how HR would not, feel about that. <laughs> it's probably not the uh, the best approach. But 
maybe that like a hard nudge of like, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're going to have to be able to serve everybody that comes in, not just these like one offs that are few and far between. I mean, how many churches can we build and how many commercial projects really yeah. go up? Yeah, I think it's um, it's a tough line. It, it, you can't really I'm sure HR would have um, some opinions as far as, you know, what what you can and can't do when, you know, mm-hmm. somebody is has already mentioned that that's, you know, the direction that they're heading in. But, I, you know, I think you're right. It's it's best to pair them up, um, perhaps even to say, like, hey, you know, we need you to to help, you know, train the person that might be potentially replacing you. And, you know, when that day comes and we just want to make sure that they're, they're ready and, and who better to, you know, to kind of guide them on, on the processes. I mean, it may not be design necessarily, but just, you know, the different pieces and steps Mm -hmm. to our process um, than somebody that's been doing it for a long time. And hopefully that's a good, you know, good opportunity and maybe, maybe throw in a little bonus at that point and, you know, make it worth their while. But okay. I mean, I can't say that I, I don't know the right answer either. It's um, I've never dealt with it and I want to make sure that it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's good for everyone. Mm-hmm. Well, I think there's gotta be a way to like, we got to pass on that info, right? There's been this, this industry yeah. suffered enough from like, well, I know what I know, but I'm only going to give you enough to yeah. make you somewhat useful to me, but not be able to go out on your own. And so I think mm-hmm. to, to bring that next generation in and really show them like, look, we love to communicate. We love to share. We love to work together. It's not always about you. And at the end of the day, look, I, I think the the team needs to understand that if the store succeeds, we all succeed because mm-hmm. the store is still there to provide me a job. So I may not have gotten that one project because they wanted to work with a different designer, or I may have had to work with a designer and we split a commission. But if we're doing what's right by the company, the company will still be there next month and the month after that and the year after that in order to continue to provide for us. And so we all have to invest in to get out. And I think that's overlooked a lot, right? It's, Mm -hmm. I just, I need this for me. I need this right now. And that's, we can't (laughs) have that attitude. It's not going to work. It's not going to pay off. Yeah. I like the, the we over me, um, statement. Like it just, it feels better when you're working Mm -hmm. on a team and you can at least say like, you know, what are we going to do about this? Or how are we going to handle this? Like, it's not, me pointing my finger at you, how are you going to handle it? It's, you know, let's do this together. And I mean, really, we're when, when you succeed as a team, it is, it's good for everyone. And although you might see the benefits of, you know, the sale, the large sale, whatever it might be personally, um, knowing that those, those things that you did in the process, like actually can help fund, you know, a team activity, maybe it's, you know, a day out, you know, go to a ball game or go, Mm -hmm. you know, do something fun with your team, go bowling, whatever it is. Like that's the kind of stuff that that, that's why you can do those things is because the team works together um, to, you know, work towards like the same goal. Yeah. Well, we got to build each other up, right? We want to grow the brand Mm -hmm. and and we don't want to just go do trust falls in the warehouse and not have Rachel catch (laughs) us because she thinks she's funny. Ooh, I know she would do that to me. She'd just let me fall, <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? <laughs> no. no, I I know. <laughs> um, is there anything we didn't hit on that we should have hit? Like, is, is there is there a struggle we didn't talk about? Is there a situation that happened that maybe we need to hear about that could help somebody else? I think on the other side, I mean, we didn't really talk about the installation side of this. You know, that is a big part of it as well. Mm-hmm. I. You know, my, our store, we have our owner's dad, um, who is, I mean, if you could just take the knowledge that that guy has, and if you could just like sprinkle it onto other people, it would be amazing. But we have to, we have to figure out a way that while he's still able to teach um, some of these younger installers or, you know, even the ones that aren't younger, but like they have to be open to it. And I Mm -hmm. think that's a tough thing right now is that like the older 
the installer, I mean, I'm not saying that they all know everything and they, they're probably doing a lot of things that they've always done it that way because they've always done it that way. But there's a lot to be learned. And if we could figure out a way to get those seasoned (laughs) installers, um, just to like take a little time to invest into those younger ones. I mean, Mm -hmm. like how much, like that's free information. That's like just that time and that effort to just kind of, you know, figure out how, how we really want to mold those, those newer employees, those newer installers into um, the way that we want them to be doing these installs. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, Mm -hmm. hopefully it becomes like, you know, you don't want to lose somebody before they're able to like really, you know, share their, their wealth of knowledge. Um, But it's, you know, I think one of the things I always learned was from, from Bob is like, you start with the end in mind, you know, start with that. Mm -hmm. How is the job going to be finished? Um, You don't go in the job to start and lay in floors. You're going to, you're going to figure out where your end points are. Um, You're going to figure out how you're going to finish off this room and then making sure planning ahead that that's how your, how your installation is going to go. So, and that can go for anything. I think that's just, you know, you looking at the goal mm-hmm. ahead of you mm-hmm. instead of like just putting one foot in front of the other. It's like, all right, let's, let's think of how we want this all to, to end up. Um, so yeah, just some of that knowledge. I, I wish there was a really good way to just like gather I, it all. You know, I know they're not going to be doing TikToks and <laughs> stuff uh, like that. Correct. So. I honestly, I don't know. I, I 100% agree is uh, and, and what I'll tell you is is the mindset that I've come to is that middle bracket of people I don't care about anymore I really don't a- a- mm-hmm. and it's because look you know where to find the information this podcast is here the Facebook groups are there there's still like probably online forums on different web pages and stuff there's there's magazines there's YouTube like if you want to learn about your industry Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to go and f- use some resources and, and you can find the info. You either want it or you don't. You're going to find it. Right. I'm not going to sit there and hound you about it. Who I am going to hound are the young guys who need to be molded and and taught a better way. And that's mm-hmm. who I'm worried about is because that's if we don't fix that, the yeah. problem we have now and previously is only going to continue. And I'm not right. interested in it. And so I'm going to, I'll take you. Like, if you want to jump on the boat, man, come on, like get in, like like, get on board. And like, we're, we're sailing off. We're doing our thing over here. We've been doing it for, I don't even know what, almost three years now. Like it's, it's, Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're chugging along. We, We got some good steam going, but I'm really worried about the young guys and how to get them involved and interested and, and the gals. And, and I hear that more gals are showing up at like job fairs than, than guys are to like look at mm-hmm. construction trades. So come on, I'll give me a call. Amazing. Call. I, I got plenty of people to refer you to across the country. If you're listening to this, I will find you an installer or I, I will do my darndest to help find you one. So, but that's who I'm really worried about is like, I want to make sure the young people get a, a, passion instilled in them they, they yes. become hungry for knowledge and education getting certifications um and and I, look it's not the certification isn't about the sheet of paper the sheet of paper is great okay i can use it as a marketing tool but it's something for mm-hmm. me to go and and prove to myself like i know what i'm doing because these people know how to follow the rules and the standards and the guidelines and make it all mm-hmm. work and they say i know what i'm doing and so I proved it to myself and, and I feel good about it. There's so many yeah. people that are like, ah, oh, you know, oh, it's, it's just, I don't like, I know what I'm doing. I've been doing it 40 years and I've been doing it the same way. Well, okay. Have you been doing it right or wrong? wrong. <laughs> go, go see. Like if you're so great, go see. Like it's not about mm-hmm. the sheet of paper. It's about personal accomplishment, let alone there is no college for this. And I already right. got one, like I got one worthless college degree. So now I'm going to go get something in my current field that says, I know what I'm doing for this aspect of it. And I'm going to feel really proud of that. They're hanging yeah. up in my showroom. I can show my clients like, look, I earn these things, right? I, I'm not, I don't have as many as Roland Thompson yet, and I probably never will, but that's okay. Like I'm going to go get ones that I feel good about. Um, mm-hmm. And so 
dealing with these different generations is I, I think at some point, like, like I already said, right. And, and I, it sounds bad, but like, look, if you're not willing to jump on the, I want to learn wagon, I can't put my effort there. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to evolve anymore, this may not be the place for you. And I, and it's precision floors and decor is probably that same environment. Like mm-hmm. you're expanding, you're growing, you're moving forward. You're not, if you stay stagnant in this industry, like you will go away. And I think that's one of the right. problems with it is there was some stagnation. And so mm-hmm. we're, we're seeing some evolution now and now we got to find a way to get the young people in and, and, and move it forward. So that's, well, and that's I think it's memory. like it's that whole, you know, we have a lot of we have some young installers right now. Um, a couple of them are my owner's sons and, mm-hmm. you know, they show up to a job and I'll tell you, like, sometimes the insta- the homeowner is like, how old are you? <laughs> you know, and, you know, and, mm-hmm. and then they they're there with their grandpa and he's showing them the ropes and he's they work together and it's it's kind of a really beautiful thing when you think about it, but as well as I think we have to recognize that um, not everybody is going to have every skill. And I mean, there's certain floors that you probably would prefer not to install. There's certain skills that it's not that you couldn't do it. It's just that you haven't gained that skill yet. Right. So not to say that you should have a, um, maybe like a focus on one type of flooring, but mm-hmm. we've, we've found that that isn't a bad thing. Like if you're really good at carpet, you know, stick to carpet, like that, that's your specialty. Um, you can probably do something else pretty good or okay, but you know, that's something that, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be valuable in that department. Um, and maybe open it up and try to learn something new or try to learn a different skill. And maybe one of your other, you know, fellow installers could potentially teach you something. And I think mm-hmm. that's one thing that I don't want to say guys sometimes have an ego about that. They don't want another guy to show them something. I don't know if that's a thing, but I noticed uh, that it is be. a little, it's a little tough because it's, co- it's competition in one way, even though we're all working for the same company, but I can kind of, you know, it's like, why did you give him that job? Or why did you, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. gosh, because he's better at that. I don't know. <laughs> like, I know why, but, I'm, you know, let's. Yeah. Well, I think it's teaching people more valuable. Well, I think it's teaching people that abundancy mindset. Look, there's more mm-hmm. than enough work going around. If yeah. everyone's struggling to hire installers, um, that's saying something there's more work than can get done so stop worrying about you having work and who got what job just go get the job done and mm-hmm. get another one and another one and if you do some better work then maybe you get some of the better jobs i look I, i'm not a huge fan of how some retail stores work and and what they do to their installers but it's not not all shops are are the same mm-hmm. go if you don't like it if you don't like how your shop's treating you right now you can leave I guarantee you, you will find a job if you're, if you, if you're worth half your weight, right? Like you will be able to mm-hmm. go and find another shop to hire you, especially if you're any good. So if you don't like what you're getting right. paid and you don't like how they treat you drive down the road, there's, you'll get hired because everyone wants somebody. Um, I feel good. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, I mean, we went, we, we touched on that. Is there anything else? I'll, I'll be honest. I, I You know, I think it's when it comes to the generational differences, we have to all realize that we have more in common than we probably think. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's our job as fellow employees of, you know, one another um, to make a little bit of an effort to actually talk to each other and maybe learn a a thing or two about one another. And I guarantee you, if you talk long enough, you're going to find something that you connect on whether it's a cat or a dog or maybe your children or a place that you visited or just, I mean, just the place that you work for. I mean, that's, you're in this building together for so many hours a day. Like you may as well get along and you may Mm -hmm. as well find something that, you know, will connect the two of you or the the group in general. Um, And that's, I think knowing that we probably have more in common then and and just embrace each other's 
uniqueness and um, just embrace that they're different from us because gosh, not everybody would want 10 Rachel's walking around in one place. That's probably a really scary thought to some of my <laughs> staff <laughs> or, or 10 Kyle's or, oh, you know, no. like, <laughs> let's just say that that would not be very good. No, not um, at all. And you know, the, the good things, the things that we, you know, our strengths and other people's strengths are different and just learn that, that what some person does better than you can really help you out in some way, shape or form. Um, and it's good to, it's good to acknowledge that. And it's good to point it out to them when you see something that they do, that's awesome. And you're like, oh my gosh, you just totally rocked that, that appointment and you did so good with them. You connected so well. And like, I think compliments go a really long mm -hmm. way, no matter how old or young you are. I, you know what? I, we're going to leave it right there. Embrace everybody's <laughs> uniqueness, find commonality with them, get over yourself, enjoy the people you're around. And, and no, I, I think that's, that's exactly what needs to happen, right? We were talking about it being polarized earlier. This is, this is how we don't have that. So go enjoy the people you're around. It's a couple hours a day while you're at work. Mm -hmm. Find something fun to talk to them about. You don't have to let them get to you. I, I, that's beautiful. Find the common commonalities and embrace the uniqueness. Beautiful. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us. Thank you, Rachel, for joining me again. Always a pleasure. Love what you're doing. Love watching you grow. Love seeing the company grow. Um, love what I see going on with women of the flooring business and you stepping up and, and taking more roles and being out in the spotlight. It's, it's absolutely awesome. Everybody check out flooracademypod.com. You can find all the places we stream over there. There's a shop. You can get a nice shirt. You can get a fanny pack. You can get a, uh, somebody ordered a coffee mug recently. Drink your coffee out of a, out of a floor Academy mug. There you go. Enjoy your morning. while you, you know, you can, learn while you i don't know how to rhyme learn and like drinking but learn learn while you sip okay I, that's what i was gonna say but it doesn't rhyme but learn while you sip okay it'll be great get those earbuds in or you can uh look we you can find us you can tell alexa to play floor academy and she'll do mm -hmm. it so you can like you know sit down and your echo will be there nice morning little sunrise coming up with as your you're coffee. on your patio in the morning and with your floor academy coffee mug <laughs> L look at this beautiful word picture okay just Put yourself there. Uh, I should have worn my shirt. I totally <laughs> forgot. It's in, yeah. It's okay. Uh, if you want to help support the show, you can go do so over at patreon.com slash floor academy. Even $5 a month goes a long way in helping me to continue to produce this content, have conversations, and help move this industry forward, hopefully in growing an asset instead of owning a job. I want to, once again, let's thank my sponsors, uh, International Surface Event and John's Manville. And I think that'll do it. We will catch you next week. <laughs>